I think the whole issue of uh, trying to demonstrate uh, a uh, evolution as it's classically taught that uh, indeed uh, life came along in a swamp and uh, some of the fish came up on land as amphibians and then uh, some of them uh, uh, became reptiles and then some of the pinions of the rept or some of the scales of the reptile became pinions on a bird and the birds flew away and then they went to mammals and then they went to upright primates and finally to man. Um, the evidence for that is still lacking. There is not one uh, connection between the so-called systematic deficiencies, the alleged big gaps that exist in the uh, uh, record uh, of geology, for there are the gaps in the geological record, there are the gaps in comparative morphology when you go to the museum and see the bones of a big dinosaur and you see another mammal and then you see man and there are supposed to be connections between them. And so they put a label underneath of it in the book. Similarity implies common descent. We all descended from the same uh, line. But I think that when you see a Frank Lloyd Wright building, you see all of them, you would put the label underneath of all these buildings, similarity implies common designer. Same one worked on all the buildings. So I would argue that there is no shred of evidence still at this late date in the geological record. There still are gaps and systematic deficiencies and we've got to jump from one to the other. Um, even the alleged Archaeopteryx, which was supposed to fill in the gap with a slate uh, from down in South America that's supposed to show that uh, a reptile and a bird were the same, uh, are no longer uh, uh, taken as, as evidence and the scientists themselves throw that out. And the same thing too could be said for even other kinds of uh, crossovers and uh, a work in genetics. And in genetics we've not been able to demonstrate it either through the use of x-ray or mustard gas. So my understanding of the Genesis record is that on the beginning of each of the days and on two of the days, day three and day six, God said clearly, let there be. And there was. In other words, the creation came about as a result of the word of God. Uh, that's what Psalm 33, verse 6 and 9 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens created. And so God spoke, and it came into being. Now, this means there also was development there, too, as well. And um, we have tremendous genetic development. God may have only made one dog, or may have made originally a wolf, from which developed all the strains of dogs. But this is nowhere near the, what evolution is talking about. And so I think we must be, uh, be careful about that. The other thing is the amount of time. Please remember that Genesis 1.1 says that the date for creation is in the beginning. That's the biblical date. And I think for us to try to uh, sign a B.C. date is going beyond the scriptures. The scripture just says our commitment is that there was nothing before God. He is the one who is the source of everything. So it was in the beginning that he created. And then our 24-hour days argued Augustine, the great church father at the end uh, of the fourth century AD. He said there were three creative days before God made 24-hour days on the fourth day of creation. So we need to keep that in mind too as well. But there's not one bit of evidence for evolution as it currently is being constructed and as it has been since Darwin's day. I would urge the church to stay miles away from it and trust the God of creation. I am the one who created by the word of my mouth.